Hey guys, it's MC Fix It here. We have a Still 031 AV with a bad carburetor and it just needs a new spark plug as well. And so we got a kit that's going to do all of that. Um, this thing is pretty old. I mean, it literally says made in West Germany. Um, so you're, you're looking pre eighties or eighties, mid eighties and before. And so, uh, we're going to go ahead and take it apart and show you exactly the, the tools and the supplies and the process on how to put a new carburetor in. I pulled it a minute ago and you still have compression, but it's just not working and it sat for a few years. Um, so we will need to dump out the gasoline. Uh, before we go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go through all the tools and supplies that you need. Here are the different tools and supplies you're going to need. This is the entire kit. It comes with lots of different things. The carburetor, um, a new filter with both of the metal pieces that you need, um, your different screens, um, a new spark plug, new fuel lines, and fuel filter. Um, I'm not certain if we're going to do the fuel lines and fuel filter. Once we get in there, we'll see how they look. Um, but we do definitely want to change the spark plug out as well as your carburetor. And so you're going to want to have a spark plug that uses a three-force uh, socket that is meant for spark plugs. Uh, then for the actual carburetor, you are going to need an 8 millimeter, a flathead, um, probably a pick. You probably also will want some kind of pliers. There's a the metal piece back in there. You'll have to kind of bend out and put back in. Um, I, I like to use anti-seize and a little bit of dialectic grease on the spark plug. So we'll be using that. And if it's kind of nasty, uh, some carb cleaner really does help. Clean up inside and you'll probably want some paper towels as well. And I always like to wear gloves because you're working with different chemicals. And uh, that should be all that we need for uh, making this project uh, complete. So you can go ahead and uh, I'm going to go dump this into my fire pit. You will want to make sure that this is cleaned out so you have the ability to put fresh new gas uh, and oil mixture in here. So after you've disposed of the gasoline properly, you can go ahead and put the cap back on it. Also, don't cook any s'mores if you just dumped it on your fire pit like I just did. I got some brush I'm going to burn up. We're going to go ahead and remove the cover. You do want to make sure the choke is in the correct position as you pull this off. And you're going to see the air filter, and back here is the carburetor. So we need to get the air filter off. And so it's just a flat head, and you just unscrew it. And there's two of these. These will be on the. You have to go to the back side on this, and you may want to move your choke a little bit. If you had a like a, I call it a nubby screwdriver, one of the really small ones that's only like a couple of inches, that works really well. Um, and then you go ahead and kind of just move it back and forth. Oh, the whole thing fell apart. Cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can see how dirty and nasty that is. That's probably actually kind of a good thing that I showed you that. Uh, not intentional, but as you move the choke, it actually has a little mechanism inside that allows the airflow to be different. Go ahead and dispose of this. Uh, then I'm just going to set this off to the side, but I either use a silver Sharpie or a black Sharpie, and I will put today's date 921. Probably should have used a black Sharpie, but I just Put it on there that way you can see when everything was changed out uh, then we're going to go ahead and take that eight millimeter and once you kind of break it which does not take very much just go ahead and spin that out you will want to make sure you save these nuts because uh, the new one does not come with it so put those in a safe place.
and do notice it does not come with any or this one does not have one on the front side here so we are not going to put one back on for that and we'll see what the back side has so this is where you have to go ahead and kind of bend this and manipulate it to come out So I'm first gonna try, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and just grab the, I was gonna say I was just gonna try the pick first, but I do need to get in there and actually kind of bend it a little bit to get this out. Oh, I just noticed something. It looks like it has like one of those little half washers. So maybe if I just pull that out, I'll have access to it. I thought I was going to have to bend it out. got one of those little washers so this is gonna be real easy to lose so keep track of where that is and then this should just slide right off oh that's so much easier so don't bend that one I was completely wrong it just got one of those little locking washers on it oh one other thing you might want if you did not dump out your gasoline so I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of paper towels down So you may want to go ahead and grab a punch because you can put your gas line back in it. And so this is going to come straight out. My hands are kind of big, so this is not the easiest process. In fact, I think I'm going to grab a flathead and just slowly help it out. There it goes. And so this is where you would want to go ahead. If you had gasoline a lot, you can put a punch right in that. I dumped all mine out, so I'm not too worried. I thought I'd have a little residual, and I didn't have any. So this is pretty similar to this. I'm kind of impressed. Everything looks pretty much right on. Good job, aftermarket, wherever this one came from. Probably really don't want to know where it came from, but uh, so I like to just go ahead and kind of just make sure it looks like it's all going to line up. And then go ahead and put back on your gas line first. Go ahead and slide that into position. Now this is important that you get this one in as well. Uh, then we're going to go ahead put the metal piece back on. Remember this is where your little washer is. It's going to help lock that into place. Okay, it's on there just like it should be. Wow, that was really easy to put back on too. Oh, and the other thing is this did not have one of these, so we're just going to disregard those. Um, I forgot to tell you, but there it did look like there's some kind of O-ring um, on there. And I think I know where this had issues. Had a bunch of gaskets right here that are kind of bent up and dinged up, so I bet that is where we had issues with that carburetor. So we will need to put these two 8mm little nuts back on. So I'm going to do it by hand to get them both started. Uh, then we'll just tighten them hand tight. I 
these little ratcheting things work so well. You just have to remember which side is which, which I always forget, but once you get it on there. And you're gonna take your air filter and you're gonna go ahead and make sure it's all nice and lined up. And I went ahead and put the other metal piece in it. And we'll just begin to tighten that down on there. And this one is that metal piece that I was just talking about. And I just go ahead and kind of slide it up in there then twist it. You will want to make sure your choke is up so you have access to this. And then go ahead and put your choke back to where it should go or else you won't be able to get your cover on. And the cover goes this direction. And just kind of put it in place and then twist it to the right and it should lock it in make sure your choke works properly and I kind of move that around and that is just what you want so we're gonna go ahead and move to the spark plug go ahead and pull the boot off and there is not a lot of room to work in this one make sure you're in reverse This spark plug actually looks pretty much brand new. I'm going to keep that in there. Um, normally I don't do that, but uh person who had this last and owned it, um, that looks brand new. And that's a champion one versus this one that is a off-brand. So I'm going to put back in the champion one. I am going to put just a touch of dialectic grease on it. I just put, sorry, I said dialectic grease. I told him an anti-seize. Don't put dialectic grease there anti-seize lubrication uh, then I just go ahead and just like that go ahead and put that back down in there you got to really kind of bend it out of the way there it goes so once you're in by hand, I am going to set this to 125 inch pounds, which is a pretty common um, torque spec for spark plugs. I could not find online anywhere on exactly the torque spec. And so I just ended up doing an echo trimmer the other day and it was 125. Not the exact same spark plug, plug but pretty close in size. I'm not left handed as well, which makes this kind of difficult there it goes that little snap is all you needed to hear so now that we have a new carburetor and spark plug that one was okay but you could have changed it out and I kind of showed you how to do that uh, hope this helps you guys out hope you get your still 013 AV or similar models up and running again and can cut down any trees that you need. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know if you have any comments in the description. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching today. I hope this was helpful to show you how to take out the carburetor and the air filter and change out spark plug if it's needed. Like I said, this one was a new one. But uh, hopefully this was helpful. If you do have any comments, please go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. There'll be links in the description on uh, how you can get the different tools and parts if you need any of that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. So now you have your new carburetor, your new air filter, um, and your new spark plug. You're ready to rock and roll. I did not mention uh, the lines. The lines looked fine. I'm not worried about changing those out at that point. I am gonna save those for if I need to do it in the future. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. Please comment if you do have any questions. Thank you guys so much for watching.